Hello and welcome to Gearheads. My name's Jesse and today we're going to talk about this new law that I've been hearing about and reading about online uh, that's going on up in Sacramento County in California. Now I've been, I've seen a few videos on this. Uh, there's been some articles posted online and there's, a, there's definitely been some threads posted on various forums and all kinds of comments. People are all up in an uproar and upset and angry saying California is a uh, is a shithole, you should build the wall around California, and various other things like that. Everybody's angry, and understandably why. Uh, I, you know, I agree with their sentiment. But, before just jumping on the bandwagon and getting all angry, I decided let's actually just read the law and see what it says. So I did go online, I went to the Sacramento County website. They have a short little, um, what, on the code enforcement section of the website, they have a small little breakdown of it. And then uh, in case that wasn't enough, I actually wanted to just go on the zoning regulation site, which is uh, a PDF that's available. And it's on the San Diego, or not San Diego, sorry, I'm used to saying that because I live in San Diego. But um, it's on the sacramentocounty.net site, land use regulation section, and it's got all the zoning laws there. It's section 5.2.0.b. So if you want to go read it for yourself, go read it. Uh, maybe I'll put a link down in the description. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and actually read through. It's actually not that long. And, uh, and let's see what it has to say and see what we think. So here we are on the computer, I am at section 520B and it is titled Minor and Major Repair and Maintenance of Personal Vehicles and this was amended 04-07-2016. So by the way, this is not a new law. This has already been in place for over three years. Uh, I guess people are just now starting to get in an uproar about it because somebody happened to stumble across it and, uh, and start talking about it online. So here we are. Um, so, let's just read the first paragraph and see how much we can get through with that before, you know, wanting to... Anyway. Minor vehicle repair shall include brake part replacement. Okay, that's minor, sure. Minor tune-up. Change of oil and filter. Repair of flat tire. Lubrication and other similar operations. Um... I mean, you can tell already this is definitely not written by some, I mean, you just tell off the first sentence right away. This is not written by anybody that really knows much about auto repair or working on anything because it's already extremely vague just in the first sentence. Um, let's read the next sentence though. Uh, major automobile repair or maintenance shall include any vehicle repair and maintenance other than the listed operations including body or painting work of vehicle or vehicle parts. <laughs> so I guess from that uh, you wouldn't even be allowed to paint your brake calipers in your garage with your door shut. If your neighbor heard you spraying the paint can they could call you in. So it says major automobile repair or maintenance shall include any vehicle repair and maintenance other than the listed operations, which basically means anything other than what they said. So the only things they said so far that you are allowed to do is like oil change, a brake job, minor tune up, which depending on the vehicle you're working on may or may not be a minor job. Um, and what else? Repair of a flat tire. Lubrication and other similar operations. All right, so then let's go ahead and get to the next uh, paragraph. That was, that was the first sentence. I was just reading it again to have it fresh in my brain. Now the next paragraph says, it shall be unlawful for any person to engage in or permit others to engage in. So no friends' cars or no having a friend over to work on your car. Um, sorry, where was I? In, oh, engage in minor vehicle repair or maintenance in any agricultural, agricultural residential, residential, interim estate, and interim residential zoning district under any of the circumstances described in section 520B1 through 3. So uh, that already jumps out to me as strange and a little bit aggressive because uh, agricultural or agricultural residential, like what about all the people, by the way, up in Sacramento, there's a lot of uh, rural areas up there in that county, people that do farming and stuff. What, so it's illegal to work on your farm equipment? Is that, I mean, 
I, maybe, maybe because this says maintenance of personal vehicles, maybe the farm equipment is exempt from that. I don't really know, but it doesn't really say right here at least. But that's something to think about too. Um, you know, that's pretty much the normal thing on a farm. People fix their own tractors and fix their own farm equipment that they have. And obviously, if they're doing that, they're probably going to be working on their own vehicles as well. So, all right. So it goes into a little bit more detail. It said, uh, what, let's see. Number one, so it says it should be unlawful to engage in yada, yada, yada. And I already read that part. And then it says, one, using tools not normally found in a residence. Once again, very vague. What is normally or not normally found in a residence? What's, what's normal to be found in, you know, my uncle's residence or my brother's residence or my residence are all three very different things. So what, who gets to decide what is normally found in a residence? Uh, I would consider, and so would a lot of people, an air compressor normal, but you know, the kind of person that wrote this, they probably wouldn't co even consider an air compressor normal. Uh, conducted on vehicles registered to persons not currently, re currently residing on the lot or parcel and conducted outside of a fully enclosed garage. So hold on before I continue. So yeah, like we, we saw before, if the vehicle is not registered to you, not allowed, or uh, you're probably also not allowed to have any of your friends over uh, and have them on your house even working on their own car because it's not their property. I would assume that's kind of how this works. Uh, conducted outside a fully enclosed garage and resulting in any vehicle being inoperable for a period in excess of 24 hours. Like, come on. So. Uh, if you're working on your car and, and uh, you, got, you, know, you get in the middle of something, you get stuck waiting for a part, and, and suddenly it's going to be more than 24 hours, that's illegal now. That's not legal if you're in any of these zoning areas, which basically, you know, it's like residential is kind of the big one for a lot of people. But, but don't even mention, uh, how about all the people that live in apartments? I get it, you know, it's already kind of not, you know, not according to the rules in most places to be working on your car in the parking lot in the apartment, but a lot of people have been there, you know, you got a problem with your car, you're too poor to take it to the mechanic, so what the heck are you supposed to do if you can't at least do some kind of simple thing or repair in the, in the uh, parking lot of the apartment? Or at, nothing, at least if you don't have that, you maybe have a friend with a house and a garage you can take your car to and work on it there. Like that, like at least people are still going to do this either way. I mean, the law is not going to change what people are, have been doing for forever. but. That is now illegal, which is, you know, really sad and kind of a bummer. It's like I, you know, whether you can get away with something or not doesn't, you know, doesn't really to me make it okay or make it an excuse. I don't want to have to feel like something that's normal is now an illegal activity. So there's one more paragraph. Let's go ahead and finish, finish up. Like I said, it's actually not that long. Uh, the next paragraph, it shall be unlawful for any person to engage in or permit others to engage in major repair or maintenance of vehicles in any agricultural, agricultural residential, residential, interim agricultural holding, interim estate, or interim residential zone. So, and that's the same zoning that it already said before. Now, oh man, this is crazy. So first off, I think that this is very, this is written with a lot of gray areas and it's not specific about a lot of things. It's like, so who's it going to be up to on who gets fined or whether or not somebody gets fined for uh, repair and who gets to decide what is minor and what is major repair and what if it's considered a minor repair but for some uh, you know other reason it took you longer than 24 hours to have the job completed, you know, like it's very vague. They're not really telling you exactly what you are and aren't allowed to do, which just shows it was written by, you know, the government. Probably my assumption is they write this just because they want to keep people from running businesses out of their house. That's probably the biggest reason they did this. And they probably will leave homeowners and people working on their projects alone, but it's the law. So you know, like even if they're going to leave you alone, should you have to be now considered technically a criminal because you have a project car in your garage that you're working on? And even if you're, if you're not using air tools and you're not bothering your neighbors running your air tools at two or three in the morning, like what is it of a concern to them? 
So that's the uh, actual site or the uh, the zoning you know code written there. But they had another uh, page on one of the Sacramento websites. So it was code enforcement at the, at the uh, Sacramento County Net website. Uh, let's see here. So it kind of goes over the same list I already gave you, but it does add one paragraph at the end here, and it says. Uh, why is code enforcement concerned about residential automotive repair? I would love to know why is you know why why do they want to tell us what to do? The chemicals involved in major auto repair can pollute our neighborhoods and endanger the health and well-being of our residents. Furthermore, this kind of activity increases vehicle traffic and can visually impact uh, or oh and the visual impact can negatively impact property values. All right, first off, um, that's not an unreasonable way to feel for some people maybe, like the chemicals involved. Should we have people out there pouring oil and pouring coolant and stuff in the grass or in the dirt in their yard? No, that's not okay. You shouldn't do that. Nobody should be doing that. But there's other ways that you could control and handle that uh, situation. And um, either way, that's, so that's one part of it. Uh, so they're saying it's for health. And then furthermore, this kind of activity increases vehicle traffic. How? What? How does this increase or decrease traffic? Which is that kind of, that sentence there kind of tells me that it is, this law is written with the intent of uh, trying to keep people from running businesses out of their house and stuff like that. That could increase traffic a little bit, but working on your own stuff ain't going to do squat. And the visual impact can negatively impact property values. Okay, yes, I get it. Uh, if you want to have a, you know, want you want to live in a nice area, and a lot of people want to, you know, go buy a house in a nice area, and they don't want to look at other people's lawn ornaments and uh, ugly project cars or just dumps. That the truth is, a lot of people just leave dumps hanging around in their front yard, and uh, they're saying that that's illegal and not okay. All right, fine. Like I get where you're coming from there, but. The problem for me is this is a this is a whole county. This is not uh, an HOA rule. This is not a city rule um, or a town rule of some sort. This is the whole county. That's kind of crazy to me. So so first off, like the hazardous waste part of it, I, I do understand that to an extent. You don't want people dumping things. You don't want people ha you know polluting the environment any more than it already is. Uh, you know, so proper waste removal. There's ways to do that and there's ways to enforce that without just outlawing auto repair. Uh, you know, if somebody's dumping stuff, then make that illegal. And if they're caught, then fine them. Or, you know, they can get reported and fined. Whatever. You don't have to make auto repair illegal. All right, so I think that's enough on the computer. We pretty much covered like what the laws actually said and what the, the county website says. So as far as like what, what else do is there to think about it or what are other people saying or what do I think? Uh, first off, um, I understand a lot of people are right off the bat just saying, screw California, don't live there. Oh, it doesn't affect me. I don't live there. And you know what? You're right, right now it doesn't. But the scary thing about laws like this is they spread. And uh, I am sure there's probably other cities with, you know, laws in their zoning rules and stuff around the country that have these in them too. So if you live somewhere, maybe it would be prudent of you, you know, somewhere else, go and look up uh, what your zoning laws are and see if you actually have laws similar to this. Now, as far as the laws, the law itself goes and its intent, I think, like I said, they're trying to keep people from running businesses and people doing side work and stuff like that because first off, then they're not licensed, they're not paying the tax money to the government when they do that. Secondly, um, you know, they can blame, they can say that it's, a, that it's a liability problem or whatever else, and then, uh, I don't know. I, my, I'm just saying I think that probably has somewhat to do with the reason that they put this in there. It's just that by doing so, you're incriminating anybody that really, you know, works on their own car, aside from just doing like a brake job and an oil change. Like anything past that could potentially be considered criminal. Right? And that's not fair. I don't, I don't like that rule at all. I also understand where they're coming from when they're trying to, you know, say on there that for the hazardous waste and stuff, they don't want, you know, people to be polluting more. I get it, but I don't think this is the best way to go around, you know, go about it. Criminalizing anybody that's working on their car is not the best way to do this. And uh, at the end of the day, I understand where some of these things are coming from, like the property values thing. Yeah, I, I understand. If you live in a nice area and uh, people are, 
you know, people are getting a little bit out of hand with all the stuff that they keep, you know, around their yard or whatever, or they're always up late making noise, being rude to their neighbors, that can be a problem. Um, but I also still feel like there's a better way to handle that situation. Uh, I feel like there's just got to be more compromises made. That's just it, this law was written very lazily, and is just kind of like a big blanket thrown out there to catch everything, and then they can just pick out what they want and who they want to get in trouble. Problem is, there's a lot of people under that blanket, and all it takes is one you know bad thing, and suddenly you're in trouble, or something else happens, and then they're like, oh hey, we can ding you on that too, you know. That's how these things work, and it's a, it's a bummer, sadly. So, at the end of the day, like I said, I get it. But personally, that's why I, you know, I don't like living down in the city. That's part of the problem with this also, though. It's a county uh, rule, not a city rule. It's a county rule. That's a way bigger deal than just a city rule. It's easy to say, oh, I don't live in the city. I'm outside the zone of the city. I, you know, I live in the wilderness, or I live up in the boonies and I can do what I want. And you know, I think a lot of people up in Sacramento, they probably have different zoning rules. I don't know what, if you live in a rural area or a small suburb way away, I don't know what your zoning would be in that case. Um, so if you do live up there, maybe it's worth checking out and finding out what your actual zone, you know, where you live, what it's zoned for. But in any case, uh, you know, that's why I personally don't like living down in the city. I hate the city. I like living out, you know, out in the country. You got a little bit more freedom. You kind of do what you want. And I already, if you know, if I'm a homeowner and I have a garage, why in God's green earth should anybody be able to tell me what I can do in my garage with my door shut if I'm not polluting, breaking the law in any other unreasonable way, and, uh, you know, if I'm being a jerk and, and being way too loud for neighbors, you know, that's one thing, but also that's a noise, that could be a noise regulation, not an auto repair regulation. So in any case, you know, at the end of the day, I don't like it. I don't like, I don't like laws and stuff like this. I'm a red, white, and blue blooded American. And if I buy a house and I own property, I want to be able to do what I want on it. And I don't want other people to tell me what to do. There's already enough laws and everything else out there. We don't need to add more of them. And, uh, you know, especially add more and paint them with such a wide brush that catches so many people under it. Anyway, um, I'm sure there's probably a lot more opinions and maybe points that I did not consider, that I didn't discuss, so if you guys have more to add, other information to share, drop a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Like I said, I don't live in Sacramento, so it doesn't directly affect me. I haven't even bothered reading what San Diego's are yet, but maybe I should do that at some point. And uh, maybe you should too. You know, maybe you should look up what the rules are for where you live. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, and uh, you know, I get it. There's a lot of things about California that suck, but it's also a beautiful place a lot of the time. And uh, anyway, not sure where I was going with that really, but it's just an extra thought. I, I like it here, but I hate it here at the same time, and I know a lot of people are gonna be commenting about that as well. So in any case, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, and as always, keep wrenching.